Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been hanging around here lately, you know that we have some massive projects going on outside in the garage. Well, I'm not going to say massive, it's really not that big of a project, but it's still a, a fairly decent sized project. But when you're doing these projects, it's important not to get a one track mind and forget about the other animals that you need to take care of every day. And today I'm talking about a specific animal, my ice tegu, Trixie the tegu. She has outgrown her enclosure. We need to get her upgraded into something bigger and luckily I had a 75 gallon aquarium blow out the bottom seam so we're going to get that cleaned up and turn it into a terrarium for this tegu. Normally I don't like using aquariums for uh, reptiles because it's just going down through the top is not very sweet. I like the front opening doors it just makes things easier but she's going to go into brumation here probably last year she went into brumation in October so you know she's got about another month or two to go so this will just be to get her through probably until next summer. But anyways, enough talking, let's just get to work. All right, so here is the aquarium that had the bottom seam blow out on us at 2.30 in the morning. Luckily, my dog was barking at the hang on back filter that was running dry, woke me up. But anyways, here we are. I still got the substrate in here. We're gonna keep this substrate because this is eventually gonna be a huge planted terrarium after the tegu outgrows this one. And this substrate is really good. This is also, a mixture of sand, eco-complete. I've already got moss mixed in there as well, so it's gonna be really good for her to burrow in as well when she gets ready to brewmate. The problem is, is this 3D background. At first, let's get this light out of the way. At first, my plan was to take it out, but now I kinda of wanna keep it in there because I think it would look nice. The problem is, is I don't want to silicone it. I wanna be able to remove this and make a custom 3D background when that time comes. So we're gonna to have to get creative with the hardscape it doesn't matter where I move this light, it's just in the way, isn't it? So yeah, we're gonna have to get creative with the hardscape and maybe get some giant pieces of wood in here to hold it back, I don't know. But first, we gotta clean up this glass here. So look who decided to come out. I guess I was making too much noise for her. Woke her up, Trixie the Tegu, the Ice Tegu. If you're wondering what an Ice Tegu is, it's a specific strain, a cross. So it's 50% Chacoan Whitehead. 37.5% blue, and then uh, what would that make it? 12.5% red tegu. And also, she is 100% het for albinos, but she still carries all the traits of an Argentine tegu or a Chacoan tegu. Definitely not like a gold tegu or a Colombian tegu. Thankfully, she has never bit me. When she was younger, she tail whipped me once or twice, but she's kind of settled down. I got bit by my carpet python the other day, so that was fun. But Trixie here, she is an absolute sweetheart. You can tell. So this this is a three foot uh, zoom in, no exoterra terrarium. Clearly outgrowing it. Look how big she is now. She has put on a ton of size this summer. I'm super excited. But there she is, the ice tegu, ice Trixie, the ice tegu. Let's get back to work. All right, I got this screen top just wedged in there to hold this back, so I have easier access to the glass here get all this algae off. As you saw in my last video, I'm just using distilled white vinegar again and these sponges. I have a couple spray bottles that would be smarter, but one of them has hydrogen peroxide in it and one of them has easy green fertilizer in it. So we're just going to have to do it this way. But as you can see, it just takes this stuff off basically in one swipe. Just that easy. It does kind of smell a little bit though, but oops. There went the vinegar. Luckily I closed the cap. So I'm gonna finish this up real quick, do the rest of the front and the sides, and then I'll check back in with you. All right, so we got this front piece cleaned up pretty nicely. Now this, what am I using that for? That's gonna be her water bowl. As you can see, her current water bowl is definitely not gonna cut it. She has outgrown that. So we wanna get this in here before I start doing too much hardscape and the heat is gonna be on this side. So I'm gonna put the water on this side and I am going to bury this down in here but I do not want her digging up under here. Now it just so happens that this is gonna wedge down in here perfectly and help keep this background secure. So that's nice, then we're just gonna fill in around. Now this is doing, this is where the sand's gonna be kind of a pain. I'm gonna have to get all this out of here. I was a little too loosey-goosey throwing this sand around, and then I realized this water dish has to come out every single day anyways. 
So there's no point to sink it in here and build up all the sand around it, blah, blah, blah. I'll spread this around a bit. So we got the water in here. Now we need to create a basking area. Like I said, the heat is gonna be on this side. So I got a piece of wood that I'm gonna try to come up and over and wedge in here. Now at this size, she loves to climb. She loves to explore. As she gets older, climbing areas won't be as important. So I'm gonna make sure to give her some nice hardscape to kind of explore and see if I can take this out without it falling all the way over. So I got a huge piece of wood here that I don't even know if it's gonna fit, but we're gonna give it a try. Hopefully start it out down here and kind of curl it over. All right, so we got the piece of wood in here. So as you can see, obviously it starts here and arcs up and over, and it'll give her a nice basking spot right here to sit under the UVA, UVB, her heat bulbs, everything. And this is also a big enough piece to where she's gonna be climbing all over this nonstop. Like I said, she does love to climb and explore. So, so far, I'm liking how this is turning out. I don't like actually how close this is to the front glass. It's only a few inches, but if I move this towards the back, then this comes forward just the way it works. You can see it's already touching the back there. And then that would also prevent us from using this to hold the 3D background in place. So while I don't like that being so close to the glass, it's all right, it won't bother me. So the next thing we gotta do is give her a big enough hide. You can see this is just a little Petco hide from when she was a baby. She still squeezes in there, but it can't be too comfortable. Sometimes her head is poking out, sometimes her, her back end is poking out. So I can't imagine she's too happy about cruising down in there and getting all cramped. So I went to the local reptile store and this is what I got her, a gigantic hide here. Hopefully it'll fit under here. But before we put the hide in there, we're gonna get some sphagnum moss in here, some real dirt and some peat moss in here and just kind of put in a nice top layer. So here's the soil I've been using recently, black gold earthworm casting blend, natural and organic, same with the peat moss and same with the sphagnum moss. This is actually Northwest out of Washington and Oregon. Can't complain about that. I don't know why that would matter, but I don't know. It makes me feel a little bit better because that's where I'm from. So anyways, we're gonna cut these bags open and we're gonna use probably almost all of this. This is Potato the Dragon Puffer, or also called the Humpback Puffer. You can see the hump right there in his back. Pretty easy to figure out why that's his common name. Just checking it out, wondering what's going on in the fish room today. What's all the racket about? Waiting for his mealworms. And then the sphagnum moss here, we're just going to kind of mix this in where his hide is going, just to help keep some humidity in his hide. Break it up as best as I can to mix it around this is also good just to have in your soil anyways especially in terrariums well that was a gigantic pain in the butt when i was in here mixing up all this dirt i noticed there was some gigantic screws sticking out of here i don't know if we caught that at any point in filming but i actually had to drill them out as you see there that was a giant pain in the butt oh but we got all of this in here now it's all mixed up really nice now we just got to wet this down real quick. Just a light little layer here. Should be good. All right, substrate is complete. Nice little soak there. Now we just gotta get the hide in here and hopefully this will fit in here. Oh yeah, I think it's gonna slide right in there. That is just about perfect. Here's kind of the wide angle shot here, starting to really come together. We just need to throw some fake plants in here. No real plants at this time, because she will absolutely destroy anything that I put in here. So only fake plants for her. Maybe we can put some vines on the 3D wall back there. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna gather up some fake plants and we'll see what we can make happen. All right, so I got a nice big chunk of fake plant right here. I stuck one in the corner there. And I'm gonna put one on top of the hide here. And then I think I'm actually gonna leave this open. I like having it nice and open. It makes it just look a little bigger. And she's gonna be able to climb through here. Now guys, these fake plants have been with me for 20 years. So they're not really looking the greatest as well. They might've lost some color, but they still don't look too bad. I got one more fake plant to put in here. I kind of get carried away when I'm doing this stuff and forget to film, but you know, it happens sometimes. 
but this is just going to fit perfect right here. Spread these out just a bit, bend these down so they kind of go over the hole, but not completely. There, see, you got a nice little covered hide in there for her. Oh yeah, I'm liking this a lot. I put another light on here just to brighten it up a little bit. Let's take a step back and see how this looks now. I gotta say, it's looking pretty sweet. I think she's gonna like it. Next thing I gotta do is uh, figure out what I'm gonna do for tops. I kinda, kinda haven't got that far yet. I might just reuse the same tops that we had on there when it was a fish tank, minus a little spot for the screen here, because obviously we don't want heat on my polymer uh, tops there so we'll figure out a way to make that happen but I do gotta say I'm liking how this is coming together all right so I forgot the old tops had cutouts in the back for the hang on back filter so obviously that's not gonna work so we're just gonna cut new tops anyways and like I said I use this Lexan sheeting from Home Depot I've already measured it I'm gonna take it out cut it real quick and be right back so just to show you what it looks like here is the left side all done nice and sturdy we're definitely going to have to weight this down so she can't push it up, but that's not too big of a deal. It's kind of an easy problem to deal with. We just got to do this side now, but I just wanted to show you what it's going to look like. All right, we got the other side complete. I got the, uh, you can see I got the measurements to cut out the middle here for the screen top. I cannot make that cut yet because I got to do a drop cut with the skill saw. I do not have a jigsaw, unfortunately, so I do got to do a drop cut and I can't do that by myself. So I gotta wait for my buddy to get home and then he can assist me with the drop cut. I could do it by myself, but it's not worth the risk. Uh, I like my fingers, I wanna keep them. I've never done a drop cut on a piece of Lexan, only on wood. I can't imagine it being much different, but given how this is a small size, I'm gonna need someone to hold the guard and possibly the piece of Lexan too. <laughs> it could be kind of dicey. But really the only thing we have left to do is to get this full of water and get the tegu over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Look at her home, it's completely decimated. But don't worry, Trixie. We're gonna take you over right now so you can check it out. Come on, I know you wanna come out. Now don't cr try to crawl up my arm. It's your new home. Well, that's gonna about do it for me. I gave it one final misting. I also put a rock in her water dish because it is kind of deep and if she doesn't get a good jump, she won't be able to get out of there. So just to make things a little easier for her and a little peace of mind for me that she won't drown. I don't know that I'm liking these Lexan tops, honestly. Um, I'll probably end up getting like some medium density fiberboard or something. There, I'm sure there's all kinds of different types of wood I can use. I'll make a wood screen mesh top, but for now, it'll get the job done and it'll allow the UVA and UVB to pass through. So that's what's really most important. So another project complete and about a hundred more to go. Guys, make sure you're subscribed if you're not. Hit that notification bell. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this enclosure. I think it turned out pretty excellent and I'll see you guys next time.